good morning. Let's do a Bridget Riley inspired op art project. These are the materials that you'll need. Let's get started. Open your sketchbook to a nice clean piece of paper and then pull out a piece of your project paper, your multimedia pad. Put that on your sketchbook so that if you draw and it goes off of your project paper, it doesn't go onto the table. Now we're going to start with your large circle template and you're going to place it a little bit higher than halfway on your paper and then using an HB pencil or you could also use a mechanical pencil or a yellow writing pencil, whatever works for you. And just go ahead and trace that large circle template. Now we can put that to the side. Next, you're going to get your small circle template. You're gonna put that right in the middle of the circle that you drew, and then you're going to nudge it down so it's not quite touching the first circle that you drew, but it's, it's further away from the top than it is the bottom. And you're going to go ahead and create that circle. Now you can put that circle template aside. You can pick up your tape roll, put it right in the center of the small circle template circle, nudge it down so that it is a closer to the bottom than the top, not touching, and make that circle. Now without moving the circle template, or without moving the tape dispenser, without moving the tape, <laughs> you have another circle on the inside of the tape. So you're just going to nudge that down and make another circle like that. Now, because uh, we're trying to get concentric circles that are evenly spaced, and there's quite a bit of space between this and the other one, then I'm just going to mark halfway between my smallest circle and the one next to it, halfway between my smallest circle and the one next to it on the side, halfway between the smallest circle, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> sorry. Um, and then halfway from this left side of the smallest circle and then one next to it. And then that is going to, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> There's something tickling my nose. And then um, I'm, I can do the same thing in between here and give myself as many little tick marks that are halfway and just dividing everything by half until I have uh, little marks for another circle. Now this one, I can't, I don't have a circle template that fits that size. So I'm just going to very lightly connect these circles the best that I can. And I'm just making short little lines that connect these like that. And then I can take another look at it and see if I need to smooth it out. It looks like if I came out just a little bit here. Anyway, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just make it as close as possible. If you make some lines that you're not happy with, then you can erase like that. And so forth. Now we're also going to uh, make one more circle inside our smallest circle template. We don't have a um, circle temp another circle template that's smaller, so I'm just going to give myself some little guide. I know that I, it's going to be a little bit further off of the top than the bottom, and I'm just going to do my best to make a circle in here. It's gonna be fine. Don't don't stress yourself out. Just do the best that you can. Remember your eraser is here. If you want to erase it, you can make that circle over and over. Now on the inside of that tiniest circle, 
we are going to make circles, but there it's gonna look like it's diminishing, like we're making a hole that's going down inside of these. So we're just gonna make a semicircle, kind of like a crescent moon. And then we're gonna make a smaller one, and then a smaller one. And now it should kind of look like um, all, like we're making a hole, and things are going down in the hole. We're going to exaggerate that um, as much as we can with our lines coming up next. We might go ahead and make one more circle on the outside. So whatever the distance is here, I'm gonna make that just a little bit bigger. Whatever the distance is here, I'm gonna make that just a little bit bigger. Whatever it is on the side, giving myself these little tick marks is going to help me make circles that are um, close to the same. Gosh, I can't talk and draw at the same time. That's okay. And maybe we'll make another one. I don't know, it depends on where your first circle was, if you're up against the top or not. But I'm going to come out here, give myself another tick mark, a little bit um, bigger distance than my two outer rings and then another tick mark a little bit bigger than my two outer rings a little bit bigger than my two outer rings and then this one is actually for me it's off of my paper so I'm going to pretend like it's way out here the distance between the two outer rings my next one is going to be even bigger and then I can make as many tick marks as I need in order to help me figure out how big this circle is. And then I'm just going to make little tiny sketch marks. Now, I um, you can use your wrist as kind of a circle maker. So I'm putting my wrist in the middle-ish and then I'm just kind of twisting my um, hand so that my wrist is naturally going to make an arc. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And we're just making this so that we connect those lines. And let's go ahead and make one more. So whatever this distance is on the outer two rings, we're gonna make a tick mark that's a little bit wider. These outer two rings, we're gonna make a tick mark and it happens to go off of our paper. These outer two rings, and then it goes off of our paper. These outer two rings, and it goes off of our paper. And then you can do the same. Outer two rings a little bit bigger. Outer two rings a little bit bigger. Outer two rings a little bit bigger. And if you want to, you can make another set of tick marks. You can do this really as many times as you like. Just to give you a shorter distance between tick marks in order to help you make a nice circle. And then, of course, this doesn't matter because it's off of my paper, but it'll help. See, and I'm putting my hand in the middle so that it naturally helps me make an arc. And since this is off the page, it doesn't matter. So that's pretty good. We are going to stop there and start to make our lines. The first line that we're going to make is starting in the middle and going straight up. So for this line, we can get our ruler, put it down, put our pencil in the very center of the smallest circle, and then just make a nice line going straight up. We're also going to extend that line going straight down. Now we're going to 
make additional lines on the right side and the left side that mirror each other and that will create a checkerboard pattern and will also warp based on our concentric circles going down and creating this like tunnel in the center. So I'm gonna start on that center. This is gonna be a little bit tricky, so you'll wanna draw lightly so that you can erase. I'm gonna put your pencil on the very center of the smallest little circle, and then we're gonna bring it up and arc out just a little bit. And we're gonna be doing that all the way around. So I'm gonna help you figure out where to do that. The first one that we're going to do is going to come up and go off at the corner of our um, paper. And this one will come off and go at the corner of that paper. So we're going to go up, kind of mm, like it, if you're looking at a clock, kind of like you're going toward one o'clock. Toward one o'clock, one o'clock. And then when you get out to the last couple of rings, then you're going to curve it so that it goes out to uh, your corner. And then we're going to make one that if your, um, if your clock were one o'clock, then go ahead and go to two o'clock. So we're gonna go here and it's going to go up, like it's going up and above and then it's going to curve out. And then we're going to have one that goes up. And curves. We're gonna have one that goes this direction. We're trying to make even segments. So out here curves and then we're gonna make one that goes out here and curves so this can be kind of tricky feel free to erase I want you to be happy with this before you finish with the pencil um, so that we can um, work with the pen and we'll be happy with how the pen works out so we're going to do the same one two three four and five the same five lines um, on the left side and they're going to mirror each other which means their start place and their stop place are going to be the same but just on the opposite side of the paper. So for the line on the left side that mirrors this one we know that it's going to start in the middle of a circle and then it's going to go to the corner. So it's going to start in the middle of a circle and go to the corner and you can uh, do it from either the center of your circle up and then let it curve out. Um, and then the next line is going to um, start in the middle of the circle and then end on the opposite side over here. So I can actually take my ruler and just figure out, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I know that on this side, it, this line is going to end at this point along the edge of the paper. So I can curve that in like that. I know that the next line is going to end over here. I can use my ruler and where it ends on the right side, my mirrored line is going to end on the left side. So it's going to come out and then in like that. I know that the mirrored image of this line is going to be over here. So where this one ends on the right side, my mirrored line is going to end opposite on the left. And I can do that. Where this one ends, um, along the bottom, I know that the spacing is going to be the same on the left. So that's about two inches. So this one's gonna be about two inches. Oof, that's a lot of lines. Now we're going to use our ink pen. 
and you can use your fine tip ink pen and we're going to go over our pencil lines. You want to go nice and slow. Really take your time. Don't rush. Art is the kind of thing that the slower that you go, the happier you are with the end product. Listen to your music or do a little bit of meditation. Quiet your mind. Take your time. Cool about illusions is we're actually working on a flat piece of paper but the way that we decide to draw the lines can make it look like it's a hole or like it's hovering all kinds of really amazing neat things now's the time to use your eraser and to erase your pencil lines Okay, does it look like a hole? I think it's pretty cool. Um, I think I might like to make just uh, one more line out here. So the same distance that my outer two uh, circles are, I'm gonna go that much further and then just a little bit further. And then I'm going to arc it around. And I'm going to go ahead and draw that in with my pen. There you go. Come back and erase my pencil line. We're just going to color it in like a checkerboard and the checkerboard pattern is going to really enhance the idea of this being an optical illusion. I'm just going to use black, but you could use any material that you wanted. If you wanted to use um, color pencils, if you wanted to use the highlighters, any of those materials that you would like, you can use. Let's just double check before we start inking and make sure that we calculated the right number so that we're going to have black and white checkers. So you can pick any of the full circles that you have, not the ones that go off of your page, but one that's a full circle. And let's just make sure that we have this correct. So if this is going to be black, then we're just going to skip as we circle around every other um, 
uh, every other square is going to be colored in black and then skip to the others. So we're going to skip, color this in, 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 skip. And if we did it correctly, then we should have a skip and then back to a colored in. So now I'm going to come on the checkerboard that I started with. And I'm going to really carefully, really slowly color it in. Remember, you can do whatever colors you want to do. And if you'd like to do color and you'd like to do it in Sharpie, I have colored Sharpies on the supply shelf. So feel free to use those if you would like. Make sure that you color in slowly and carefully and you're skipping every other square. Skip. Skip. Back to where we started. Now we're going to do the same thing, alternating squares. So between the two that we colored in, the one that's uh, closest to the center and in the next row is going to be colored in. Now, you feel free to turn your paper if that helps. Also, feel free to, if you would like to, if you're working with black, then black will go right over pencil. So if you're working with black Sharpie, you could come in and give yourself a little scribble mark inside each of the squares that you plan to color in with black. You can't do that if you're going to be using the um, highlighters because you would end up seeing the pencil mark. So I leave it totally up to you if that's going to help or not. And it's just depending on what your choice is for uh, materials. Okay, now we have I kind of don't like that that thin pen was a slightly different color black so I'm just going over it very carefully with the same black that I used for the big squares. Alright, so now we're just going to do a little bit of shading in the center 
so that it looks even more like a hole. So we're going to use the 6B pencil and we're going to use our shading technique, which is just making uh, lines that are very close to each other and overlapping. And we're just going to give a little bit of shading, very good pressure down in the center, and then less pressure coming out. And very, very, very little pressure on the fourth or fifth ring, just barely in the, touching the page. If you wanted to, you could go in and fill in these white squares with a color, maybe something from your highlighter. That is totally up to you. This is your art, so you get to decide. So just trying to kind of exaggerate the idea that this is um, something that's a checkerboard that's going down into a hole and using that shading to create that illusion a little bit more. Okay, you guys, so after I turned the video off, I kind of wasn't feeling like this was really going down, like it's going into a hole quite as much as I wanted to. So I came back with my colored pencil that's black and I shaded in uh, over the pencil that I had done and I exaggerated the um, dark and light a little bit more. So I'm pushing down and then uh, shading my white squares in with a little bit more pressure. And then as I get out here, less pressure and then just maybe not. Anyway, I found that this is really helpful to use my black colored pencil instead of just my regular graphite pencil. And it just really helped with the illusion a little bit more. So I highly recommend that you come back in and add a little bit of your dark colored pencil. The closer it is to the center circle, the more pressure you're going to apply. And then as it gets further away from that, cent that center circle, you're just gonna barely touch. I'm almost like just floating over my paper, almost barely touching it. Remember too that it's helpful if you're shading with um, a, a dull pencil so that you're not making lines, but your pencil is working for you. And that just looks a lot more uh, like an optical illusion. Yeah, I like that better. We can get. Similarly, if I want to come right back with my white colored pencil and just on the um, black squares that are closest to the outside, give them just a little bit of white. It'll help that illusion even more. So on the black squares, the part of the black square that's furthest away from the outside, I'm just giving it a little bit of shade with some pressure and then less pressure going in. Sh 
shade, less pressure going in. Just to kind of try to push that illusion a little bit. Oh yeah, that's good. Good job guys.